Layouts can make a big difference to how your pivot tables view. You can see on screen I've got three different pivot table layouts. All three of these show the exact same numbers and yet they look radically different. There's a bewildering array of different options. So really what I'm going to do in this video is focus on what really matters and what can really make your pivot table look good. You can download the very spreadsheet I'm working on by clicking in the link below and uh, I'll send that straight to you and you can either work along or you can do that at the end of the video and use the data to practice on. The default way in which uh, pivot tables lay out, as you've seen, you have problems with number formats and actually some of the layouts are not particularly great. Like I don't like the way, for example, we've got things that say column labels and row labels and stuff like that. So really we can we can do a lot of this, we can get rid of a lot of this through the various options and the layout options and styles. If we look at the examples, for example, that I showed you earlier, I think this first one on the left is extremely messy and hard to follow. I, I think if you publish that as a report, yes, it has the information, but certainly the second one is a lot clearer. And I think actually the third one is exceptionally clear. So, and I'll come on to how you go about creating this sort of layout on the part three of this video. But for the moment, I'll focus on how you can get looking, how you can get things looking a lot better. So on the pivot table, if you click anywhere on the pivot table, you will get a pivot table tools highlight up here. Now, if you click away from it, you can see that totally disappears. So you click anywhere on the pivot table, you get that. And on the design tab, you've got various options, very easy to access here. So subtotals, for example, let's, um, let's put the values like this here. So we're showing a sales column and a profit column, and then the various delivery methods and the regions within that. Now, to be honest, it's probably more likely that you would be wanting to present data like this by region with the various um, delivery methods broken out. So we'll start with that. So subtotals, you can see uh, by default, the subtotals are shown above. So we can put not showing them at all, which is probably not very helpful, or that's at the top, or we can show them at the bottom on a separate line. Now that instantly starts to make it all look a bit messy if you're not careful. So one thing you can do straight away on that is insert blank rows. And that kind of breaks it out straight away and it can then be you have uh, your total for each thing and it's starting to look a bit more like a report. Now, grand totals, um, if you put, uh, you can switch them on and off. Now they're actually quite far down at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is switch that around so you can see the grand totals. So we'll switch them um, on for the columns, sorry. And that'll give you a grand total at the bottom. Um, now rows, we have not actually got any rows, but if we had put, say, the ship mode as a row instead of as a column, do something like that, you can see now how we've got the, the grand totals at the bottom and we've got the grand totals at the side there. This is probably a better demonstration. And um, we can switch them off entirely, or we can say that we just want to see them for the rows. But I think we would probably want, in this case, all of them on for rows and columns. Report layout, basic trial and error sort of stuff. That's not necessarily going to look good. But one thing it's worth putting in occasionally is um this repeat items field so 
if I was to do that, that allows you to see the different repeat item things. So the reason you might want to do repeat items is if you're going to use kind of lookups or anything like that, or link any formulas to this pivot table, that can be very useful because if you haven't got that, if that's switched off and you're picking up these values over here with a formula, you might go over there and say you want sum of sales and a value and drag that down. Now this this is all sort of gobbledygook. So if you click back in here, go on there, report layout, uh, repeat all item labels, then all of a sudden your linked formulas actually picking up the right information. So that's why that one can be useful now and again. I think we'll go back to compact mode, which is quite handy. We've got our blank rows inserted. We're going to put subtotals at the bottom of each group. And I think we want to probably take, uh, if we take out profit so that we can do this. So this is looking good. Uh, right, we'll do something like that, I think. Row headers. Uh, I think we probably want them. They're, all they're doing is pretty much underlying it. Column headers, again, we're going to want those. But banded rows, they can be quite useful. So they can give us a slightly different design. And banded columns would, if we put profit back in, uh, sorry, put profit back in and put the values as a column. Uh, banded columns will basically if we take that off you'll see if we had numerous columns you would soon see what that was doing and then we got our various styles that we can pick from here um, all of which you can play around with those and decide what it is that you prefer to see or not now you do need to change that number format back again Now one other feature on the analysis tab that's kind of handy is this these buttons over here, just uh, the show options. Now you can put turn off the field headers. Now that can be quite useful because what that did is instead of saying row labels, it just removes that. Now quite often, if you have, um, if we were to put the ship mode there, yeah. So field headers will get rid of where it says column and row labels, and that could be quite useful. Um, field list just turns off that on and off. And incidentally, if you double click on that, it will dock it over on the right hand side. Um, but you can just drag it and resize it to wherever you like. Um, if we take out, say that, so we end up with a pivot table like that, but put ship mode underneath. Above, sorry, you can see you have these buttons that allow you to open and close it. This one here will toggle that, so you no longer have that. So I'll put in the number format. And it is quite frustrating that the number format has to come in every time like that. Um, right, so I think that's looking uh, much more like the kind of report that you might want. Talk you through all the key layout options and how you can make the pivot table look great straight away, much, much easier to understand just from simple things like putting subtitles below, having blank rows, and potentially positioning things in such a way as to uh, make them as clear as possible for people. Remember that you can download this spreadsheet yourself and have a play around. I'm going to leave it with all the finished examples in it as well. So you can, you've got great examples there of various different formats that you can use and layouts. You've been watching John on Up for Excel. 
where I'm going to help you get your Excel skills up so you can get these task times down.